Let's talk about the psychology of change. Now we're gonna start off with a little exercise that I want you all to do. Don't do it right now, but as soon as we're done here, I want you to text or reach out to three friends who like you. And that's really important. They have to like you for this exercise to work. And I want you to ask those three friends why they like you, but they only get one word to answer. They can say because you're friendly or you're curious or you're lots of fun. That's two words, uh, three actually. Yeah, they can pick whatever word they want. When I ask people in my own life, they almost always use the same word, passion. And the reason that I talk about passion in my own life is because I know that if I can show up being that person every single day, I'll be the best person that I can be. That's what I try to do on the show, when I go to the operating room. Listen, I'm not good at a lot of things, but when I do go after something, I'm passionate about it. And I know that word can remind me so, th so that I can actually continue to change to become the most passionate person I can be. So you guys do your little exercise when we're done today. Again, three friends who like you are gonna be asked why they like you, and you're gonna ask them in one word to describe why they like you, and then you can put it together and figure out it's a little exercise that might help you guide yourself. But let's be honest, the real reason we don't change is because it's sometimes hard to do, and we get mixed messages from life, right? For example, you guys wanna be special, you wanna be the best, you wanna have ambition, but at the same time, you want to be intimate, you want to fit in, you want to be connected. Now think about that. To be the best, you got to be different from everybody else because you got to be better than them. But to be intimate, you got to be the same as everybody else, so you're like them. Be different, be the same. Which one do you do? What's hard? So in fact, your desires are always coming to a peak. There is no real life work balance. It's a myth because there's no top that's flat. It's a point. You're trying to crawl your way up on each side. You're being too intimate, fitting in too much, Maybe that makes you boring or you're too ambitious, makes you arrogant. Whatever the reason is, be okay with it. Be okay with the fact that you're just crawling your way to the top like the rest of humanity. And if you remember that, then you'll also remember there's one exception. It's growth and contribution. The one difference is when you're trying to give someone something, you're actually going to grow as a person. And I've come into contact with some, some wonderful people in my life, individuals that have been able to change me because they gave to me. Sometimes they gave me time, they gave me support, resources, whatever it was, but they also grew. And I learned from that, that when I grew and, and, was, and was giving, it that felt really good. There's so many great ideas out there. If you can make it possible for someone to live their best life, you're gonna feel better about yourself and you'll actually grow at the same time. So that's the, sort of the basics of why we got such a paradox in trying to change. Then we're also pretty, critical of ourselves. I mean, ask yourselves this, if, how imperfect are you? Now, if I were to take the right side of my face and double it, or the left side and double it, and I compare the two faces, so the right face versus the left face, I don't look so symmetrical. My imperfections are pretty obvious to me and probably to you. Guess what, guys? I'm not alone. You guys look the same. If I were to divide your face, you can do this little exercise and double it, and you'll see that your two sides don't look so good. In fact, look at your friend in the mirror. And look how strange they look, because it highlights how imperfect we really are. Unfortunately, we don't think of imperfections as a normal thing, whereas they are. And I love people because they're imperfect. All of us have imperfections that make us more desirable. But unfortunately, you think of yourselves as looking like Jabba the Hutt rather than just being a little imperfect. And I want you to stop that because Jabba the Hutt's not the problem here. You're not some ogre, uh, the undesirable person. You're just a little different because you're supposed to be a little different. So if you want to change, because you should change, not because you feel compelled because you're imperfect or because you can't reach a good place in your life where things are balanced, because those aren't going to be the reasons uh, that you're going to be able to change successfully. The reasons you're going to change are because you have a deep, visceral need in your heart to change. So what holds us back? Well, if you don't have enough time, you can't change. If you don't have enough money, you can't change. If you don't have a knowledge base of what to do, it's hard to change. But my friends, what really holds us back isn't time, money, or knowledge. It's fear, fear of change. Why? Because we fear that if we try to change and we fail, that people won't care about us, they won't love us. And that ah, lo lo loss of love is spiritual death. So it's that fear that holds us back. So I want to change that equation. And I've had many guests on my show that have told the story to me in ways that are very compelling. And I have learned, working with Oprah Winfrey and many other great folks, over, the, over my career, that there is a way to change reproducibly. I'm gonna give it to you right now, all right? Pay attention. First thing, people don't change based on what they know. They change based on how they feel. It's not up here, right? It's about their hearts. Facts don't change your mind, your heart does. How you feel about a problem does. Try it out at home when, you, when you're talking to your parents tonight or your friends. You try to change someone who's doing something wrong and they won't change because you haven't gotten them to feel differently about the problem. That's why people smoke, even when you're telling them not to. 
That's why people make mistakes over and over again with the food they're eating or the amount they're working. It all comes down to getting the fueling differently about the problems. You also got to make it easy to do the right thing. And when you make it easy to do the right thing by automating your life, the right thing starts to happen. That's why I have the same breakfast every day. Every day, I don't exercise differently. I do the same things as much as I can because I know if I do that, I'll get it done every day. Same time every day. It's part of what I do for a living. And I want to adore my solutions because you know what? You want to adore the things you're doing so you do them. They happen to be healthy for you, but it's not the reason that you're doing them. It's because you love them. Now, we all search for connection in our lives. Look around the room right now. People care about you and hopefully you care back for them. That's our innate need as human beings to feel connected. And we feel grateful, hopefully, for whatever world we're living in. And I know it's not always perfect. I get that. But you can be grateful about small things, big things, and everything in between. And ultimately, that's the path to happiness and joy. And joy is that deeper happiness that you get. It's not the fizzy bubbles on the top of laughter. It's that deep feeling that I'm okay. And you want to have gratitude for the things around you so you get to feel that more often. And if you do all those things, then you'll be able to change your life for the better. I'm going to give you five life adjustments, just five things you can share with somebody else that allow you to grow and feel bigger because you contributed to their well-being. It's just a good example. If you get your blood pressure or your family member's blood pressure down, if you get your exercise in every day, if you eat diets that are fantastic for you that happen to be you know, incredibly tasty at the same time, if you can manage to stress a little effectively then maybe than you have been. In fact, that's one of the best ways to sleep which is the number one unmanaged problem we have in America. And finally, if you deal with addictions, which has to do with the other problems, you'll have changed your life and the lives of people around you dramatically. So keep that in mind. And I'm gonna walk you through a good example. This is an animation of Rosie O'Donnell. Many of you know her. She's a famous TV personality, and she's done a lot of famous stuff. That's the big artery inside her heart called the widow maker. Because when it closes off, you become a widow. Now the arteries in the, in, in the heart grow slowly over the 20, 30 year period. Uh, it starts to get plaque and that plaque ultimately ruptures sometimes. See how it cracked right there? Then you start to form a scab on uh, the artery. When the artery forms a scab because it's trying to heal itself, it blocks off the artery. And then boom! You just caused a bruise on the front of your heart. It's actually more than a bruise. You killed the muscle there. What you're witnessing is a heart attack. The number one cause of death in the Western world. In America, that's why people die more than any other. You can have similar problems happen in your brain, your kidneys, and other organs of the body. That animation is a pretty straightforward example of why you have to care about things like your blood pressure. Or by talking about cigarette smoking, which I mentioned very briefly, let me tell you about how I get people to stop smoking. I don't tell them it's bad for them because guess what? They know it's bad for them. Instead, I say, here's a healthy looking lung. This is a beautiful lung. Now let's look what happens to a lung when you've been a smoker. Boom. You see that black tar deposition there? That's from the cigarettes. You see the area up top where it looks like a moth ate it away? Right? That's called emphysema. Now when you see that lung and you think to yourself, why would I destroy, pervert this temple of the soul, my body? Now you get to understand why there's a problem with cigarettes. Now again, you tell someone to stop smoking, they feel worse about themselves because they can't stop and they go off and they smoke to relax. You show them their organs and what's going on inside their body, now they can't run from that. Now they start thinking, you've changed my heart. you changed how I feel about this problem, so maybe I'll stop. You can do the same thing in so many different areas. And I can give you example after example after example, but I think that's the basics of how you change people. And now that you understand that, go out and change the world. That's the deal here. That's what Health Corps is all about. That's why learning about your body is so important, because if you can change what's happening inside your body, you can change the world outside of it.